58. We're, <laughs> we're back. We're live. Four o'clock rock on Wednesday. You know what that means. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, under the auspices of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and Sharon Moriwaki, who is there somewhere in the gallery. Out in the mist. <laughs> <laughs> and my co-host for this inimitable show is Mike Hamnett. Raise your hand. <laughs> That's Mike. <laughs> and our principal guest uh, is, uh, is Nico Gaillard, who is with HNEI. He's, a, he's an expert in HNEI. Yep. Thanks for having me today. And our guest for the moment is Carolyn Carl, and she is with Hawaii Energy, and she's going to tell us about a certain program that took place last Friday and how it relates to the work of Hawaii Energy. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> So, um, last Friday was the um, honoree award for the for PBN's 40 Under 40. Um, so I had the pleasure of being there with a, a bunch of our, our teammates and I think it was a, a fantastic event and one of the things I was most excited about was what a great representation the energy industry had. So in addition yeah. to Hawaii Energy, um, I, me having the honor of being there, we also had Veronica Rocha from the State Energy Office as well as Jenna Long from Pacific Biofuels, so it was um, it was it was well really represented. Awesome. It was Good. really awesome. What what it means, Carolyn, is that the energy industry is turning to a real industry that people are, may I say, growing old together and they know each other. Sure. And, and yeah, maturing. 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 <laughs> maturing, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think what what we're seeing and what I'm so proud to be a part of such an amazing collaboration network of, of folks is that there are projects that are reaching far beyond just the energy sector you know we're involved in um, new technologies being installed in a variety of areas um, in hospitality and government so it's just penetrating and, it, and the clean energy future is really um, really bright yeah and you got to have people to do that and to manage it and that means there are careers in energy right that's Absol the celebration absolutely here. absolutely and yeah. they and in so many different areas of energy whether you're a service provider, whether you work for programs, administration, policy, um, you know, there there's opportunity in, in technology education, research, yeah. so research. So I mean it's it's super exciting, especially here in Hawaii, you know, with the clean tech. Yeah. Awesome. So I mean it's interesting that uh, Hawaii Energy uh, always does high leverage things. You do something you know is going to have a big effect, cast a long shadow. And this does too. Getting together on a 40 by 40 program with PBN means that you are encouraging people to get into the industry and thus build the industry. That's what you're doing. Absolutely. And yeah. I think that's, you know, what I look to my mentors and the folks who brought me in as the role models, but at the same time, you know, try to provide that sort of excitement to those coming, a recent graduate, those still in school, you know, trying to just talk about the, the plethora of things that you can get involved in no matter what your affinity is. Is it more technical? Is it more social? You know, government, all that stuff. So. Great initiative, great partnership. Absolutely. Now there's a rumor. What's that? That you have a film you want to play. Oh. Well, I think well, we always come with films. Okay, so, yeah. so it sounds like a good rumor to me. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Hardly a rumor, all facts. So, yeah, no, we have a, a clip from the event on um, on Friday just highlighting some of the honorees and, and all the great work they do. Okay, let's play that and see what... Director, Hawaii Energy. 
I'm so humbled. I feel like this is a testimony to all the great work that we've done as a team over um, the last couple of years. I'm overwhelmed. I'm really overwhelmed. The class of 2017, 40 under 40. I mean, just look across the board. There was some great representation for energy. There was great business, some small business, government. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. And I think it makes me so proud to be a part of a group that's moving Hawaii forward uh, in so many different areas. Very nice, Carolyn. Very nice Thanks. little movie. You guys always bring a movie around. We would love to see your movies. Thank you, Marvin. Yes. Marvin I, makes the movies. Marvin does make the movies. <laughs> only the best. So what, what's, your, uh, what's your take on this? I mean, this was successful, clearly. Um, and what does it mean going forward for you? Will you do it again? Well, I think we'll, I would promote as many people as possible to you know strive to bring the clean energy discussion to the forefront and you know to promote the great work that uh, so many different organizations are doing so absolutely it's it's never ending we just have to think of new opportunities to highlight successes and, and raise the bar where we're going yeah so who among the 40 can you can you tell us uh, at least a couple of names oh well I mean Hawaii clean, clean energy people sure so as I mentioned um, you know Jenna Long from Pacific Biodiesel. She was one. Yeah, Veronica Rocha from the um, this Hawaii State Energy Office I, I last year. Melissa mm -hmm. Mayashiro from um, Blue Planet was also so, honored. Um, so, and then previous years, um, Jill Sims from the Elemental Accelerator. So there's there's been That's some great, great, great. Uh, folks that have been involved, and um, I think in in addition, a lot of the the businesses that are working to become more energy efficient and, and embrace clean energy energy, you know, hospitality industry, um, the... And you'll be looking around. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be checking them out for next year. Absolutely. So that means, uh, what, do you, what do you say? Can uh, Mike Hamden and me, can we apply uh, on the 40 by 40 program? You know, 40 under 40, perhaps not, but you can definitely nominate someone. So <laughs> I would highly recommend taking a look at, at you know, and, and getting the word out about some great work that um, folks are doing on their own or with their organization. So she thinks we're older than 40? Is huh? it? No. I don't know how she came to that conclusion, but I'd say it was a very diplomatic yes. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer. I carted you at the door. So. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you so much. Carl and Carl, Hawaii Energy. Thank you so much. We're going to take Pleasure. a break now. We'll be right back. A veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that said Let's go. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Bingo, we're back. 
Now, you may think this is Carolyn, Carolyn Carl, <laughs> but it is not. It is Sharon Moriwaki, and she is another co-host. We can never have too many co-hosts here. That's right. <laughs> 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 we, we, we well, out, I wanted we to out, be here with Nico. We outnumbered <laughs> Nico <laughs> today. You're in trouble, Nico. All right. <laughs> so let's get down to the bedrock here. What do you do at HNEI? So I do research on material science. So I have a research group of, who's focusing on thin films material. So we're looking at the next generation of photovoltaic material, which eventually in you know, 15, 20 years from now could replace the silicon technology that we have here in Hawaii that we see on the rooftop. And is it going to be cheaper? To the goal is to get it cheaper, yes. Cheaper with the same sort of efficiency if you look at the, um, the thin film technology. But what we could do with that technology is also enhance the efficiency of the existing silicon like by st stacking on top of like each other. Thinner? It's, gonna it's be extremely thin. thinner. It's so thin, it's actually flexible. Uh, it's uh, a hundredth of a hair. It's extremely thin. Um, that's a, a great property of these materials. And you can stack them. And we can stack them. So not only we can uh, stack them on top of each other, but we can change their color. So they act as optical filters. So we can have material that can absorb like UV light on top of material can absorb um, visible light on top of material that can absorb infrared. And so by doing so, you improve the photon collection and you enhance the overall efficiency of the device. So what, what does the stacking do? What, what is that versus non-stacking? So the, 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 the standard technology, which is silicon, is a, is a plain, thick wafer because silicon is not a very good solar absorber. You need about a millimeter or half a millimeter of metal right. to absorb light. Um, and also you cannot change the color of silicon. So you cannot stack layer silicons on top of each other. So the efficiency is really set mm -hmm. to a theoretical value, which is actually what people get with silicon. So as far as silicon goes, you're stuck with it. You're stuck with it. You cannot so there's really no, if it's not efficient. It's, it is efficient, but you cannot really improve the efficiency beyond what's mm -hmm. been done so far. So what the industry is trying to do is to find some tricks to make it cheaper, sometimes a little bit thinner, or instead of having the grid, the metal grid that you see sometimes yeah. on the front of the panel, try to move it on the back such that you can have more photon and more light reaching mm -hmm. the, the cell. But as far as the metal is concerned, we've reached the limit of silicon. And so what we're looking at in my lab are alloys that contain different chemical elements, two, three, four chemical elements, and by changing their relative concentration, right. um, or you know, their, sometimes their thickness, or, or some, some aspect of the composition, we can change the color, essentially. And so we can have for same given material, we can change the color through all these color that I mentioned before, and we can really stack them on top of each other. That, that's really the key if you want to break the buyer of, of So you put it on windows, is that the idea? So the goal, the way we deposit these materials is, is usually on the, on the piece of glass, but you could coat that on, on a, a piece of metal. Um, you know, for, for integrated PV, you could have that on a window. Uh, you can pretty much coat that on any single substrate. Oh. That, that so you is the on. color if efficient, more efficient, or is the color just decorative? I mean, what, what is that? It's a very good question. So based on the color, you can have more current or more voltage. It's always a trade-off between the two. Hmm. A solar cell gives you current and voltage. And so by changing the color, you can have a, a color that gives you a lot of current but a very little hmm. voltage. voltage. And you have other color that gives you a lot of voltage but a little current. Hmm. And so by stacking these layers on top of each other, you can really take the best advantage of both mm -hmm. and, and limit the loss. And which maximum what's in the the maximum, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the basic science involved here? It's uh, semiconductor physics. So that's the same physics that you have in, you know, all the chips that you have in your computers or your smartphone or, you know, the memories that you have in a USB stick. So it's all about semiconductor science, how you can make sure that the material can absorb light, can conduct electricity, uh, doesn't have too much defects. Um, minimize the heat. Minimize yeah. heat. Um, if you want to stack the layers on top of each other, you got to make sure that the processes are compatible with each other. Because if you destroy the cell that's underneath as you grow the device, you kind of lose uh, the, the whole efficiency. The, the efficiency. Yeah. So the whole idea is really to find new technologies, find new materials, uh, and again, really to replace the, the technologies in the next 15 to 20 years. Mm. What's about degradation? Does it degrade over time? It really depends on the technology. Silicon is very stable. 
you know, you can have, you can see modules that are been out for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. Some more advanced technologies are extremely efficient, but degrade extremely quickly. They are actually uh, moisture sensitive. Um, the technology I'm looking at are very, very stable. Uh, you can actually buy today modules that are make, made with this type of materials. Uh, but what we try to do is to switch from the way they're made, which use a lot of electricity, a lot of what we call vacuum technologies. And what we try to do in my lab is to replace these vacuum technologies with printing techniques. Ah, so the idea is to print the solar kind of cell. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Commercialize what about maintenance? Do you have to clean it a special way in order to keep it vital? As far as my technology, technology is concerned, it really depends how you integrate the cell. Um, most of these cells have a, a sheet of glass sitting on top, so as all other PV technologies, they may have to be clean every now and again, depending on where you live. If you live by the desert, the for example, or the ocean, yes. Yeah. What about the state of the art nationwide, worldwide? I mean, are you unique in some way, or are you working in a collaborative fashion with other, other institutions of like kind? So I would say both. Um, what we're unique is we're trying to integrate these new ink-based techniques mm. really with new earth abundant material to really mm. drive the cost down but we also have a lot of collaboration with partners on the mainland um, which give us access to very unique uh, characterization technique like the synchrotron at Berkeley or we have access also to other supercomputer at Lawrence Livermore National Lab to really develop these new materials try to see how these material chemistry evolve you know how the atoms travel at the interface when we heat them up so there is there is you know the, the actual technical side which is making the material which is what we do in my group but there is a lot of fundamental research that goes into that <coughs> that is done through uh, active so patents yet not yet mm -hmm. not yet who who will own the patent? Will you, Nico? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you give I think it to Sharon UH. or Mike? <laughs> <laughs> UH. I think it would be I think it would be UH. UH. Yes. UH. Yes. 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 Intellectual property, yes. yeah. But, but the researchers have, have a piece of, of that, don't yeah, they? Yeah, we have a percentage. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think under so. the contract. Yes. Right. Yes. Right, There's yeah. a lot of industry interest, I'm sure, in what you're doing. There are, yes, yes. Um, there is company who've been looking at these inks in the past, but most of the, the approaches that they use use very toxic inks and toxic chemicals. Mm -hmm. So really our approach is to focus on, on, on toxic, on, on material that have little toxic, low toxicity and, and inks that are, can be processed very easily. So, so what are you testing for? Is it like cost, efficiency? Yes. Uh, you know, what are the variables that are, you know, yes. like that, that then say, okay, now we're ready. We're ready to commercialize this. You know, so the, the main key metric would be the watt per, I mean dollar per watt. That's really what so all the industry So you are looking drives. at cost. Oh. We're looking at cost and our approach is really to pick the chemicals that are earth abundant that we can find very easily in the earth crust. So material science kind of thing? Yes, yes. So, so is that what's holding you back? Well, you can look at some technologies which are highly efficient, but some of the constituents could be highly expensive, like you talk about, you know, 700. Either, either rare earth, but also some others, like there is a technology called CIGS, copper, indium, gallium, and selenium. Copper is oh, about... That's going to be on the final exam. <laughs> Co copper is about $5 per kilogram, and indium and gallium are about $500 per kilogram. Oh. So if we could replace these two with cheaper elements, it would be a big game changer. So that's what we try to do, yes. So let's, let's so assume that you figure that's out the material science on this. Let's assume that you're ready now and you yeah. have a way to manufacture it. Would you manufacture it here or in China? Oh, well, I hope it would be done in the U.S. It wouldn't be done in my lab. Our, our capabilities <laughs> are, are very, very small. We, we make very small samples, but the, the great thing about PV is that it's always uh, related to the area. So whether you make a small or larger one, what matters is, you know, the efficiency based on the, the collection. So it area. doesn't, it, so when you get a bigger, like, utility grade, yeah. you know, it, it's still the same? No, so that, that's a very good point. Well, I was talking about the at the research level, but when you move from the single cell to the larger panel, you have some drop in efficiency. Mm -hmm. Between, for example, the inject connection between the silicon yeah. cells, or if you have a large module of, of thin film, sometimes you have some edge effects, so the efficiency drops, or the technique that I use with these vacuum techniques are non-uniform, so you can have higher efficiency on one side of the panel 
and you know lower efficiency on the other side, which is what we're trying to fight against with that print te technology because we, we have essentially the same composition all over the substrate. So that's but with really that technology, how do you do connectivity? How did you connect? How do you connect it up to the converter and all yeah, that? So the actual cell, we start with a, 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 a metal back contact, then we grow the solar cell, and then on top we have another set of transparent top contacts. So that really creates the device. And so if you had a module, you would essentially have a very big uh, piece of glass with a very you know long piece of, of, of metal. So can you use these new ones, the ones you're developing, alongside old ones? Absolutely, yes. Mm. Yes, mm. it's essentially the same architecture. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So it's disruptive, nevertheless, though. It is. If you get this into the market, you're going to be a famous man. I hope you'll still talk to us. I will. <laughs> you invite me back. The, the, the goal is to get the cost down so that things like rooftop solar would be much cheaper than they are now. That's one example, yes. But we're working on mostly at the utility scale where, yeah. you know, for example, I saw there is that plant in, in California where they had n 9 million modules. Uh, mm. Can you imagine yeah. if you increase the efficiency by only a person or two percent? The, I mean, the balance of system it's would shrink value. significantly. Yeah. So it's not necessarily. You talk about disruptive; it's really important. But you know, sometimes just like a, an increase of eight uh, percent or two percent, or reducing the cost thing. on a very large scale, things take very large proportions. So yeah, yeah, there is disruptive and also incremental. It, it's really. Both. It's pretty exciting. How long have you been working on this? I've been with the University of Hawaii for 10 years. It's going to be 10 years this summer. Wow. Uh, but specifically on that project, I would say five years. Yes. W what's your credentials? I'm a material scientist. Um, I grew up in France. I did my PhD in the field of microelectronic, so for all these computer chips. And then when I came here as a postdoctoral fellow, I started working on artificial photosynthesis wow. uh, to make what we call solar fuels. So it's an integrated device that make hydrogen, hydrogen out of water. Oh. Uh, oh. So, and then I moved to... to Are you still in that at all? I am. I am. Yes, I am. Actually, we have a very good uh, partnership with universities across the nation, and we have also some funding from the Department of Energy mm -hmm. to work on that. Um, so yes, that still goes very well. Yeah, it's very ah, exciting. There's yeah. And there are quite a few other things going on in HNEI in this whole t sort of technology yes. development area. Yes. What other things are are they doing that integrate with what you're doing? Um, so there is some, as far as hydrogen, there is some co-workers, Godwin Severa, that you will meet at the end of the month who works right. on hydrogen storage. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is some synergetic activity as far as the material design. Um, I, really, I'm, I work at the material level, so you know that doesn't really get old. You can always work on, on a lot of different applications. So hydrogen storage, Mathieu Dubarry that you met work on, on batteries, and also there is some activities across the two labs uh, to potentially develop new materials. Mm. Uh, so what we try to do is really to give a support to HNEI to help uh, develop the next generation of materials for those who work at the device level, because as you'll see, there is people working at the grid level, at the system level, and at the device level. So, so how, like, if when you're doing your testing, wh when do you get to a point to say, okay, this is ready for commercialization? How, where do we link up with who? And are you working with these private partners on the front end, or is it, you know, when do you bring them in, or? Uh, it's a very good question. So we do, we had uh, collaboration with private partners in the past, and also through all, some of our collaboration that we have with our co-workers on mainland, we also interact with these folks. Mm. Uh, but it's not a direct te technology transfer, as you may think. Uh, if we have you know, that Eureka moment and we find a very ex exciting technology, we would have to go through the, um, the, the patenting process through UH and maybe try to promote the technology to, to other companies. Yeah, yeah so because if you're discovering something and then you give it to a private company, what's to prevent them from the running with that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I would, I would make sure that we have the, <laughs> the patent first and all the publications done right. before before it's so, passed. Okay. Yeah, so you're it's working in collaboration with a lot of other scientists and other institutions hither and yon. What's the special sauce you're bringing to it? What's, what's the, the patent area you're looking at? So it's mostly Again, how we can create new materials, um, you know, drawing from our expertise, from the work we did on solar fuels, the past work that we did on photovoltaics. How can we, really, how, how can we really uh, establish new materials uh, that could really compete with with the existing 
technologies. And our work is mostly at the matter level, using the input from our coworkers or you know the theorists or, or the person who, who can do the, the advanced characterization for us, how we can really uh, advance the technology of these materials and, and really mm. push, push the technology. So Sounds like Edison, <laughs> looking we for tungsten. Edison. Yeah. Maybe yeah. tungsten yeah. is the secret answer. Yeah. That's right. We <laughs> heard it here on Think Tech. But, but, but that, that is a question I have. So you've been in the field now for 10 years. Have you seen from where you, you started to today what kind of advances and, you know, has there been transformative or is this like evolving or you know. there is there is ups and down and, and peaks and sometimes you see in given materials you know great advances and then as it turns out it's not as a, as simple as we thought and there is some durability issues for example so it's really trying to move our our pieces on the chest mass you know one at the time um, try to advance one part of the technology to address an issue um, you know, sometimes it's it's really like you, you make a wonderful discovery that's going to help everything, but in reality it's more like you try to address a specific issue of a given technology, whether it's its durability, its cost, the manufacturing. It's so over the 10 years, what is the most exciting discovery or project or thing that you worked on? Yeah, I, I would say that the work that we do right now on this printing technologies are it's really new. exciting. It's, it's fairly new um, and we managed to get fairly good materials uh, with, you know, off the shelf chemicals that we can get in the lab very easily. We don't use, you know, highly toxic chemicals or, you know, other other toxic mm -hmm. elements and, and really being able to form these materials with high, you know, high crystallinity, very little defect is really a big challenge, and I think we've succeeded in that way. And then spraying it on glass, is that yes. the, the mm. way it works? Yes, yeah. yes. So pretty much like an inject, <coughs> inject printer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, a 3D printer. This oh. is a 3D printer? So like it wouldn't be 3D, uh, because you really want the material to be as too. dense <laughs> as possible. So you want to go 3D, but in, t in a 2D fashion. So it would be more like a layer by layer yeah. approach instead of having like an architecture. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned it's not toxic. On the other hand, you are generating electricity from the combination of elements on this, in this, in this pattern. So if you touch it, don't you get a shock? Well, the fact that it's not toxic, so that the actual the chemicals themselves don't move during the photovoltaic process. It's really an electronic process that happens in the cell. So as far as the device is concerned, nothing really evolves and moves. Uh, out of the cell, yeah, if you have a big panel, you'd rather not touch the panel if it's, <laughs> if it's not connected. But yeah, that's where our friend working on the grid and, yeah. and on the storage come in place. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Nico, uh, uh, how big is your laboratory? Uh, how many people are there to help you? Uh, yep. what, how's it structured? in this mm -hmm. scientific crucible? So it's, uh, it varies. Right now, I have two co-workers, uh, Kimberly, who's a postdoc uh, fellow, and Alex, who's a junior researcher. So we're three. Um, Sometimes we have a student helper that come over the summer to help us with these processes. Uh, it varies. It really varies. Right now, we're three. And most of our daily work is really making these materials day in, day out. So it's mm. really, you know, processing, laying these la layers on top of each other, testing the materials, sending materials around to our collaborators so they can assess different properties of the material. So it's, it's, um, it's really, it's, it's technical. So when you uh, test it, do the, how do you connect it up so that you can see that, you know, this is, this has a, so much, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How, you know how, so how we have, we actually have a solar <laughs> simulator in the lab. So uh -huh. it's a big 1,000 watt xenon bulb. So we don't have to go outside to test ourselves. Oh, so the light we live in Manoa, on, so you know, it's no way, it's no way. And so the cells themselves, they're about one inch by one inch. And we have access to the top and the back electrical contacts. And we use probes. And these probes are uh, connected to a meter, a meter, meter. That, that tells us the current and the voltage. And knowing the current and voltage, so you know we know the efficiency. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So we well, can. This assess. is probably going to change things. Um, and the question I, I put to you is: uh, Is it going to be more useful in larger arrays of solar panels mm. or smaller ones? Is it going to be the kind of thing that the homeowner would want to buy and plan for, or is it going to be like community solar if we ever have that, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> or, or you know, utility yeah. scale solar? Yeah. So, so these the thin film techno technology can be used at different scales. So whether it's at the utility scale or the homeowner scale, that would be the same type of panel. You know, like this two meter by one meter 
frame. But because they are thin film, they can also be processed for wearables, wearables technologies, you know, like on backpacks that you see sometimes, these flexible modules, or, you know, on shirts maybe, or on mm -hmm. tents. Wow. Uh, so they can be reapplied to a lot of different uh, technologies, yes. Oh my goodness, mm. I can power my cell phone with <laughs> your right. my shirt. You could. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your what's your plan on this? Ten years? Uh, what's what, what's you, are, are you the principal investigator? I am. Wonderful, and we have them here at the table. Yeah, how yeah, exciting! Isn't that exciting? So, where is it going to go from here? <laughs> so, um, we have two current activities. The one on, on photovoltaics, which is that printed technology. We're going to look for other either new materials, but also try to use uh, try to apply this technology to current. Materials that are used that are made with these vacuum techniques, which are quite expensive, and the other approach, which is the solar fuel, uh, the idea is to to create a device that can be just immersed in water, that can just split water into hydrogen and oxygen no. using sunlight. Okay. So there is a lot of work on on catalysis, mm. on corrosion protection, on you know materials development, you know all these colors. It's small scale stuff, is it? It really depends. the 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 fact is that you always have a certain watt of solar energy per meter square. So if you want a lot of power, you make you, a, you have to make it big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, more efficient doesn't mean you want to shrink the size. You, you want to keep the size and have more power out mm -hmm. of a given mm -hmm. unit of area. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, we're about out of time now, and uh, it, it befalls you as so uh, our co-host well, to you summarize. To oh, wait, before, can I just do one minute of transformation? We're, we only have a, a couple well, minutes Mike, Mike can summarize. Go ahead, go ahead. You want to well, yeah. it sounds like we're making advances at the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute on sounds photovoltaic really technology, and it's got a great future. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You have so to come back and tell us when you yeah. have that discovery. Yes, I will. <laughs> and can I talk about one minute? Transformational award? Sure. Okay. We are at Hawaii Energy Policy Forum looking at this year's awardees or nominations, and July 1 is the deadline. So uh, please submit your nominations to hawaiienergypolicy.hawaii.edu. July 1 is the deadline, and they're in various areas uh, policy, technologies, like like Nico was talking about, as well as um, energy efficiency, communication, and outreach. So please hit that button there that says submit nomination and come to uh, our website. July 1 is the deadline. So uh, and Clean come Energy to Day. And Clean Energy <laughs> Day is August 28th. Now you'll hear who the awardees are, and the governor will present the awards to you. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're about done. Nico, I wonder if you could say farewell to our audience. And if you don't mind, could you please do it in French? <laughs> Pas de problème. Merci pour votre attention. À bientôt. Wow. Bientôt. Merci. Mm. Merci. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. À bientôt. Au revoir. À tout à l'heure. Au revoir. <laughs>